Chapter 19, Slide 1. In this chapter, you will learn about the ankle and the most common conditions relating to this joint. These include the lateral ankle sprain, ankle fracture and dislocation, eversion ankle sprains, Achilles tendon strains and ruptures, and medial tibial stress syndrome, also referred to as shin splints. You will also learn how to evaluate the ankle and understand the basic rehabilitation concepts. Please use the PowerPoints to guide you in your reading. Slide 2. The medial side of the body is located closest to the middle of the body. So when I refer to medial, think of middle for assistance. The lateral side is on the outside of the body. The tibia is referred to in layman's terms as the shin bone. The fibula isn't really referred to as anything differently. Sometimes students get the terms confused as tibia and fibia because of the rhyme, when in fact it's tibia and fibula. So what is the function of the tibia and fibula? If you said the tibia is for weight bearing and the fibula is for muscle attachment, you are correct. Now run your fingers down the length of your tibia until you reach the ankle bone, referred to as the medial malleoli. Notice it's closest to the middle of the body if we draw a straight line dissecting the head into two parts and continuing to the floor. Surrounding this ankle bone are the medial ligaments. Now run your fingers along the slender outside bone referred to as the fibula and feel the ankle bone known as the lateral malleoli. The lateral ankle ligaments attach here. Take a look at the picture in this slide and notice how the fibula is longer which makes the lateral malleoli lower or more distal than the medial malleoli. You can also feel and see this using your own body as an example. This simple yet profound piece of information is very important. If the levels of the two ankle bones were the same length, the lateral portion of the ankle would be very unstable and we would be unable to accelerate and then quickly cut and change directions. So that the length of the fibula resulting in a lower position lateral ankle bone provides great stability. However, this anatomical structure also explains why we have more lateral ankle sprains than medial. It's actually the fibula that creates a fulcrum effect causing the ankle to roll into plantar flexion and inversion. Slide 3. The left picture demonstrates the ligaments on the lateral or outside of the ankle. Note how these ligaments are thin and long compared to the ligaments shown in the right picture. These are the medial ligaments. Notice how they are thick and short. Which side of the ankle is sprained more often? If you said the lateral or outside, you are correct. You can see how this structurally occurs considering the differences of ligament length and size. Slide 4. In these next few slides, review the muscles, nerves, blood supply, and prevention strategy. Notice the posterior tibialis muscle on slide 4. Remember, this is the shin splint muscle. See how the tendon runs through the medial longitudinal arch. If an athlete has flat feet, also referred to as pes planus, the arch presses down onto this tendon, which then tugs on the muscle attachment on the medial shin. The result is medial shin pain referred to as shin splints or medial tibial stress syndrome. Again, the takeaway here is that we must address the arch, not just tape the shin when dealing with shin splints. Read and review the corresponding anatomy of the foot using the PowerPoints and the textbook as your guide. Locate the requ requested information on each slide. Audio will continue again on slide 8.
Slide 8. Two weeks ago, you learned about HOPS, the assessment acronym. We will use this now to evaluate the ankle sprain. First, we address the history of the injury by asking a variety of questions. How determines the mechanism or cause of injury? Most athletes will state that they rolled the ankle, which is a cue that they plantar flexed, pointed the toes downward, and invert, pointed the toes in, while spraining the ankle. Seeing is truly believing. So if you witness the injury, you will often know how it happened without even asking. If the injury didn't occur when you were present, you need to ask when it happened. Also, ask the athlete to point with one finger the area of pain. This will make it more specific than general. Asking about past injuries will also help you determine the extent of this injury. Most first-time sprains hurt much more because the soft tissue has not been stretched before. First-time injuries also cause more emotional trauma, too. Snap, crackle, and pop is a great breakfast cereal known as Rice Krispies. But in regards to the ankle sprain, it refers to a potential break or ligament rupture. As mentioned previously, you want to make the pain objective instead of subjective by asking the athlete to rate it using a scale of 1, no pain, to 10, extreme pain. Slide 9. We now proceed to O for observation. With both shoes remaining on, look briefly for any gross deformities. If you see anything that points to a serious injury such as the bone pointing east and west instead of north and south, or the ankle dislocated, you would immediately stop the evaluation and implement your emergency action plan. Remember, the ground can act as the splint, so treat for shock by providing emotional support, a blanket for warmth if needed, and moving others out of the way. Do not give the student athlete anything to eat or drink in case the injury warrants surgery. However, if you don't notice anything grossly deformed, the student athlete's pain is subsiding and he or she is able to move the ankle without increased pain. You can ask him or her to simply bend the knee and place the foot flat on the ground. If this causes increased pain, you would need to transfer the individual to the sidelines without bearing weight. If this doesn't increase pain, simply place some gentle downward pressure above the bent knee to see how the student athlete responds. Again, if the pain increases, transfer the individual to the sidelines without bearing weight. If pain doesn't increase, carefully remove the shoe and sock. At this point, you can check for the color and temperature of the skin. Increased heat and redness is a sign of bleeding and swelling. You can also ask the athlete to gently move the ankle in all directions to determine areas of discomfort. Slide 10. You are now ready to proceed with palpation. Notice, I did not say palpitation, which is a heart condition. Proceed to systematically palpate the bones. Run your fingers along the length of the tibia. Squeeze the heel bone. Press lightly on both medial and lateral ankle bones. Now carefully palpate the Achilles tendon that runs along the back of the calf to the heel bone. Gently palpate the soft tissue that surrounds the medial ankle bone and then the lateral ankle bone. Refer to the slide for general guidelines of palpation. Slide 11. Refer to the textbook for a description and picture of the commonly used assessments, percussion and compression test, Thompson test, and the anterior drawer test. Slide 12. Refer to the textbook for a description and picture of the functional tests.
Slide 13. Watch the video clip available on Sakai, video of ankle sprain. Notice how the athlete quickly flexes or buckles her knee to avoid having all of her weight over her ankle. Notice also the plantar flexion, toes down, and inversion, toes in, mechanism of injury. We are now going to discuss specific injuries of the ankle and lower leg. This section contains graphic videos and pictures. If you prefer not to watch them, simply read the sections from the textbook. Slide 14. The first injury is the common ankle sprain. Link to this clip and empathize with the poor model who is repeatedly spraining her ankle while balancing in her stilettos. Notice too how the foot looks inside such shoes. Women, our feet weren't designed for pointy shoes, no arches, and four inch heels. I think I'll stick to my rainbows. Slide 15. To review, the most common mechanism of injury for the ankle sprain is plantar flexion and inversion. Toes go down and toes go in. The athlete will state that they rolled the ankle. Do you recall the anatomical rationale that was discussed at the beginning of this chapter? The longer fibula creates a fulcrum, placing the ankle in plantar flexion and inversion, and the medial ligaments, referred to as the deltoids, are stronger than the lateral ligaments. Hence, we have more lateral ankle sprains than medial ankle sprains. Refer to the textbook to review the signs and symptoms of the first, second, and third degree sprain. Slide 16. The treatment always includes rice. Rest with the application of crutches, ice for 20 minutes on and 40 minutes off, compress with an elastic wrap or tape, and also use a horseshoe pad as shown in the slide, and then elevate above the heart. Athletes who experience a pop during the injury, who have substantial swelling, who cannot bend the knee to place the foot flat on the ground, or whose pain does not subside with one round of icing, should be referred to a doctor for evaluation and x-ray. Athletes who demonstrate any deformity or shock should be treated as they lie, and your emergency action plan should be implemented. Slide 17. Notice the discoloration and swelling. This is from the excessive bleeding and possibly incorrect or delayed treatment. Slide 18. Consider these two pictures. Which approach should be used during the acute phase, that being the first 72 hours after injury? If you said the right picture including the ice and wrap, you are correct. I would increase the elevation, however. The left picture includes ice, but does not incorporate compression or elevation. Slide 19. Refer to the textbook to understand eversion ankle sprains. These are uncommon injuries due to the strength of the medial ligaments, known as the deltoids. Also, if you attempt to evert your ankles, notice how your knees hit almost as if you were knock-kneed. It makes it difficult to move the ankle in this position when you are weight-bearing. However, it can occur, especially if the athlete steps in a hole. When this occurs, the medial ligaments become torn, and also the medial longitudinal arch becomes stretched, resulting in actually two separate conditions. I've treated only a few of these injuries in my athletic training career, and they are very difficult and time-consuming to recover from. Slide 20. Sorry, a bit graphic. However, this picture and the link to the video demonstrate an ankle fracture and dislocation. The mechanism of injury is similar to the ankle sprain. However, additional force creates a yielding or break point, literally, in the ankle and lower leg, resulting in a fracture or dislocation. 
In the video clip, notice how the doctor applies downward traction to reduce the dislocation. The athlete will feel much better after this technique. So what do you do in this scenario? You leave the athlete where they lie, implement your emergency action plan, and treat for shock. The next slide is also graphic, so feel free to proceed to slide 22 as needed. Slide 21. Here is a picture in x-ray following an ankle dislocation. You are seeing the bottom condyle of the tibia. Notice besides its shape that there isn't a lot of blood present. Most compound fractures do not bleed profusely. In this scenario, you would gently place a towel over the injury so that the athlete or bystanders wouldn't need to see it. You would then implement your emergency action plan and treat the athlete for shock by providing a blanket, removing bystanders, and offering emotional support. Do not give the athlete anything to eat or drink as surgery will be required. Slide 22. Refer to the textbook and locate the requested information. Slide 23 shows an Achilles tendon rupture. Again, skip this slide if you want to avoid the graphic nature. Slide 24. Medial tibial stress syndrome is also known as the familiar shin splints. The mechanism of injury is chronic in nature. Basically, the repetitive nature and strength of the force being applied to the bone is greater than its strength, causing inflammation and stretching of the shin splint muscle, referred to again as the posterior tibialis tendon. For a review on this injury, refer to the previous chapter PowerPoints, especially the section about pes planus. The signs and symptoms of shin splints progresses from minor intermittent pain to severe constant pain. The complications of shin splints is a stress fracture, and as you can see in this picture, can progress into a complete fracture if the athlete continues to play with it. The treatment consists of ice massage using an ice cup, taping the arch, stretching the calf, and avoiding repetitive activities to the lower leg. Slide 25. Review this section in the textbook, especially noting the flexibility and strengthening exercises.